What's up, students? We're in the last week of our Straight Talk series. And uh, the last uh, message that we wanted to deliver to you is one of the most emotional. I want to talk about the second leading cause of death amongst teens today. Suicide. You know, it's estimated that nearly uh, 5,000 teenagers die every single year in the United States. That is, just to give you some perspective, um, if you took the largest high school in the Phoenix metro area, it's 3,800 students. That is more than the largest high school in Phoenix and in all of Arizona for that matter, gone every single year. So why don't we talk about it? I'm not sure. I'm not sure we don't, why we don't talk about it. Maybe it's because many of us pretend that everybody's happy. Most of us are, are happy all the time, and we know that's not the case. Maybe it's because we don't really know how to talk about it. So instead of bringing it up, we just leave it off the conversation table. You know, for some reason, God has intersected my life with this tragedy of suicide in ways that I don't completely understand. When I'd first started working as a pastor, I was two or three years in, and I got word from a family that goes to our church that their grandson, whom they were raising, had just taken his own life, and he's a part of our high school group. Uh, his name was Cameron. He was 15. I remember seeing Cameron as we, uh, we had him on, on Sunday night in our high school experience, and when he came, he was always really uncomfortable. I could tell he was extremely introverted, and he just had a hard time connecting with people. I had a hard time making friends. Not many people knew who Cameron really was. And so most of the time, he was alone. He was by himself. He took his own life. And uh, the, the morning after, I, I showed up at his grandparents' house and I walked into the living room and I sat down on their couch. And the sound that I heard in that living room was so quiet. And you can just sense the pain in the room that his grandparents were feeling. Didn't really know what to say. A couple years later, I, I get another call. It's, it's late at night. I don't normally get a call from my dad at this time in the evening. And he said that my cousin Marcy had taken her own life. And Marcy was 28 years old at the time. She's one of my favorite cousins. I love spending time with Marcy. She's one that would always like rough house and pick on me and kind of give me a hard time. She was just a lot of fun. But she got into drugs and alcohol and years and years of abuse and depression and bad relationships. Kind of all caught up with her. She got in a fight with her boyfriend and decided there's no reason to live anymore. I remember standing at the funeral and my family asked me to officiate it and I'm, I'm leading it. And I'm standing in front of all of my family and I'm, I'm preaching the, the good news of Jesus. But there was still that same sense that I heard here with Cameron of that same sense that I got in that living room with Cameron of that, that quiet pain. Several years later, in fact, I get a word that a friend of mine from high school, her older brother, whom I, I knew quite well while we were in school, he took his own life, and he was married, had two kids. His name is Corey. He was 33. Two little boys. Man, I went over to their house, started walking through what that service would look like. And uh, they said that that afternoon, Corey's two sons were gonna come home. They were about four and six years old. 
They said that, that we we're gonna have to tell them that they lost their dad. And they asked if I could help, and so I said, of course. And so as I was planning and plotting in my mind like what to tell them, I have no idea, I have no idea what to say in that situation. So we sat down, I remember both of the little boys were given these stuffed animals, and these, uh, these, uh, these bears, stuffed bears, and they're, they're clinging to them and, and they're hanging on to them because their parents are trying to, to soften the experience a little bit, or their, uh, their mom was, and we let them know. Same, same pain, same feeling. And then last summer, my wife and I, uh, late one evening, we were getting some texts and some messages from a family that goes to this church and that their daughter was being rushed to the hospital because they, um, they don't think she's gonna make it. See, earlier that day, she had gone out and, um, and spent the day with a, a, with a friend and she was getting a tattoo and she came home and she told them that her and her, her boyfriend had just broken up and they'd broken up and got back together and they were kind of back and forth a little bit. And she went outside the house and she was sitting on a park bench right in front of the kitchen when they can look out and see her. And they see that she's smoking a cigarette and she comes back in a little bit. They don't think much of it. They can just see that she was thinking through something and then shortly thereafter, she took her own life. Her name is Lena. And as I sat in their living room, and I, I, I process with her mom and dad, and I, I find myself in each one of these scenarios in, in a very similar state of confusion. And, and I spoke with Lena's dad and it had been, you know, a little over a year. She was 21 at the time. You know, he still wakes up thinking and hoping and in some ways praying that all of that was one bad dream and it wasn't real. And he told me that there's really no way to describe the pain that's left in the wake of a suicide. And I think what happens is that in, in so many of these examples and so many examples of maybe people that you know in your life, there's just a, a, this mental pit that, that, that people fall into. It's a depression, and they just don't know how to get out. They don't, they don't think through everything. It's just that they, they're stuck. And really, it's a place that we can all find ourselves in. Whether it's just for a little bit of time you find yourself depressed or for some of us, you've been there where it's, it's just a really long, painful season. And when you live in a long-term like, state of depression, that can be the battleground for suicide. And I know everybody in the room can't relate to what it would be like to want to take your own life, but I am almost certain that you're near somebody that has, that's thought about that, that's contemplated that. You've, You've been around somebody at your school that is, has been there before. And I want you to listen for a minute because everybody in here, whether you have thought through what it would mean uh, to commit suicide or not, if you're a Christ follower, at some point in time, you will be around a person that needs hope, that needs to be reminded of their value. And God could use you to speak hope into a person that's struggling. And so I need you to listen in, whether this is sinking really uh, deep into you right now because it's personal and you can relate to it or you can't relate to it. I want you to lean in because perhaps uh, one of the reasons why God has you here is uh, for a very specific reason. You know, maybe another reason why we don't talk about this topic is because we aren't really sure what the Bible says about suicide. Like if you flip through the scriptures, if you just type in the word suicide, it's gonna be hard to get a lot out of this. And the, the six examples that I was able to find uh, through scripture doesn't really give us a lot to go off of. There's just six examples of suicide that I know of in the Bible. 
And out of those, it doesn't really paint a good picture for it, but it doesn't paint a complete picture with it. And so we don't really know. But I know that a, a question that is often raised, and I wanted to just jump into this real fast, a question that's often raised about suicide and a, a, about the Bible or what Jesus would think about that it has to do with, with the Christian. Like, can a Christian if they take their own life, still go to heaven. I just want this to be really clear for us. What gets a person to heaven is Jesus. Faith in Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection, like that is what gives us, that's the salvation road for us is what Jesus did on the cross. It's not because of what we do, and it's not because of what we don't do that gets us away from him. Like, our actions we can't, we can't sin our way away from the cross once we've given our life to Jesus. That's not how it works. Jesus loves us. That's his grace. And another question I get asked uh, somewhat, maybe you've thought about this yourself. When it comes to suicide, you're wondering what happens to a person after they die, after they commit suicide. And I am so thankful that we don't have any responsibility in that. Like, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what happens. I don't know, I, I don't know anything about that. All I know is Jesus determines where our ultimate eternity lies. It's Jesus. It's, it's not me. It's not anybody else. It's Jesus that determines that. And so we put our hope and our trust and our faith in him. But a question that I wanted to really spend some time with you and address is not... It's not really the question of what does Jesus say about suicide because in all reality, we don't know. We don't know because he doesn't really address it directly. We can infer some things, but we don't know. But I want you to, to, to listen to this. And the reason why we're jumping into this topic, obviously because it's significant, but I need you to know about this because when it comes to straight talk, we, J Jared kicked it off in the beginning of this series and every week we've been talking about this. Our source of truth comes from the scriptures and it comes from Jesus' life. And so we turn to him. When it comes to figuring out life, we turn to him. And the question that I want to raise with you is not what would Jesus say about suicide, but what I wanna raise with you is what would Jesus say to us? What would Jesus say to us? Uh, what would Jesus say to us if we are in a, in a truly healthy mental state or if we're frustrated and we're confused and we're a mess? Like all across the spectrum, what would Jesus say to us? And I want to string together. This is kind of a unique uh, approach. We don't often uh, preach like this when we're communicating. We won't study the scriptures quite like this, but I think it's fitting uh, I want to show you three scriptures that are going to paint a picture and illustrate what I think God thinks about us and what God would say to you and me. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 is where I want to start. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Uh, what we often do in life is we medicate. We find ways of dealing with the pain and getting through the hurt. We medicate. We medicate on drugs and alcohol and seclusion and sports and pretending that everything is okay. And it's not what happens and, and it's not what works. But Jesus says, come to me. Come to me and approach me. Come to me through prayer. I've got what you need Ask, seek, and you'll find. Jesus says, come to me. And then I'm so thankful that Jesus didn't just say things, he demonstrated it. And a very familiar passage in John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. What Jesus didn't say, but he demonstrated right there, is this. I love you. I love you. The most important person in all of history 
thinks you're good stuff. He does. And he doesn't make any mistakes. He loves you. And sometimes we have this question of like, man, does anybody care? And am I worth anything? And the answer to that question is Jesus cares. And you're, you're worth more than you could even comprehend. And how we know that is his death. He showed us and he demonstrated that we're valuable because he came to earth and he died just for that reason. Because he loves us. Because he loves us. So he says, come to me, I love you. And then lastly, Matthew 28, verse 20. This is actually the last thing that Jesus said before he returned to heaven. He says, uh, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. I am with you always. The very last words to all of us. And for those of us that feel alone, I am with you. For those of us that can't quite figure out what's going on in our world and we're confused, I'm with you. He's with us when we're at our wit's end. He's with us when we like royally mess up. He's with us when we're at our, our, our biggest success in life or our lowest points. I'm with you and I'm with you always. To everyone in the room, whether you believe in Jesus or you don't believe in Jesus, this is truth. He says, I'm with you always to the very end of the age. And so if if Cameron or Marcy or Corey or Lena or whoever you have in your life that's taken their own life or whoever comes to mind for you, if this would have been a, a, a message for them to have heard, if they could have just grasped this, if they could have comprehended this, and if this kind of relates to you, if you could hear this and absorb this, Jesus says this to us, come to me, I love you, I am with you always, and you're not alone. You have value, you have purpose, and no matter uh, who you are, the God of the universe has the power to get you through anything and everything that you're going through in life. You know, there is nothing that you can't get through with God. God can help you through everything. And I wanna send you into groups with something to think through practically. If you ever find yourself kind of in a, in a mental funk, you know what that means? Like a, a mental funk, life just doesn't make sense, nothing matters, everyone hates you, you can do no right, and you start thinking like that. My, my friend calls that uh, stinking thinking. I want you to remember these two things. First one is to seek God. I know that sounds so simple, but that's what God tells us to do. Like the, the creator of the universe explains to us how to get ourselves out of problems, and he's the answer. So I know there's a, a million other things that we wanna do to get ourselves out of our own trouble, but this is it. I want you to seek God. And then secondly, this is important, I want you to pay attention to this one. I want you to speak up. I want you to seek God and I want you to speak up. And what I mean by speaking up is I want you to find someone in your life when you can communicate, whom you can communicate with. Someone close to you, a family member, a friend, a coach. And if you ever find yourself in a pit, I want you to speak up. I don't want you to just bury it and keep it quiet and think nobody cares, nobody can do anything. That's the worst possible thing that you can do. I need you to speak up. I need everybody in the room, if you ever find yourself in a pit and you feel like you're stuck and you don't know what to do, I need you to speak up. And I bet there's a ton of people out there. I bet there's a, a bunch of your friends and people from your schools, if you just look around and if you just pay attention. 
I bet they need you to speak up for them. They need you to recognize that there's, there's pain and there's hurt and there's some things going on in their life and you need to speak up for them. So can we do that? Can we seek God and can we speak up? I'm gonna send you into your groups in a moment. Uh, before I do that, I'd like to pray for you. If you would, go ahead and, uh, and bow your heads with me. Father, what a, what, a, what a confusing topic to have to deal with. And most of us at some point in our lives will really have to wrestle with uh, this concept because of someone close to us or something going on in our own minds. And I'm thankful that you've given us direction from your word. I'm, I'm thankful that your, uh, your life told a story that we can look to, that you care about us and that you love us and that we have a reason for being on this planet. I pray for anybody in the room that might find themselves in a place of a pit right now, that they would, would recognize their need for you, that they'd, they'd uh, seek you. And I pray in our group times, and after our group times, and at any time for that matter, that they'll speak up, and they'll say something, and they'll get help, and they'll find themselves in a brand new place because of you. Father, I'm thankful for you. We're thankful for you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray, amen.